first and foremost, um, I'm streaming this afternoon, but the important streams. Wednesday night, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, Fallout Equestria. And Saturday night at midnight, Eastern Standard Time, Drunk Writing Stream. Come on in. Have some fun. Get to hang out with us and then proceed to have all of the feels and then have all of the laugh and then have all of the jokes pretty much back to back, square to square. Now, on to the video. Okay, um, I'm going to come out and say this. Tropico 6 is a big step backwards in the, in the long running series. The game has several features missing from previous games, and the replayability is drastically reduced. Furthermore, the building variety is actually lacking. This isn't comparing it with a completed Tropico 4 or 5, with their literal over $100 of DLC, but just basic games. Let's start this conversation, and I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about. First and foremost, the positive points. The ability to steal monuments makes interesting, lasting decisions that have the stay with you from the colonial era to the modern era. Each one that you steal drastically changes how the island that you're ruling functions. This is actually cool. Uh, I find that there is an odd lack of consequence for stealing said monuments, however. You can steal them and the political ramifications are null, not null and void and non-existent. There isn't anything in terms of repercussion or pushback from these countries. You just have to complete the couple mini quests in between the initial pirating of it and the actual stealing of it to get it on your island. It's very strange how this has no influence on politics. I thought I'd give you my for instance for this. Um, the the Registan, like the ha not having to have built high schools is amazing. Uh, the Eiffel Tower, absolutely, or the Taj Mahal. One of these two is going to be your choice because the Eiffel Tower makes it where all your radio and TV programs reach the entire island, which drastically boosts all your media per ability, while the Taj Mahal um, makes it where you get all the money when somebody dies. Um, the Statue of Liberty or the Roman Colosseum, just straight up, these are going to be one of the two you choose. The Sphinx does nothing that you can determine and the if you're really just hardcore ignoring the religious system, this building's just useless. Uh, and lastly, the Temple of Heaven, just increasing the efficiency of all of those, as opposed to, say, the White House for edicts, which, meh. Um, the Winter Palace, which, meh. Um, increased construction rate? Why the fuck do I care? Because by the point I get time to get to the modern era, I already have like four or five construction offices. And increasing tourist fees? Really? Why do I give a fuck? You can function without the, the Brandenburg Gate's okay, but definitely the Registrar is the one that I would almost always go with 100% of the time. Or one of these two. And then it's going to be the Alpha Tower or the Taj Mahal. And it's going to be Statue of Liberty or Colossus of Rome. And then it's going to be Temple of Heaven. Every time. Like, those are literally, when I'm sitting here debating which one is going to be the best for me, literally, that's where I am. Things that are working. One, the trade ship system works much better. Like, straight up. It It's much more elegantly designed, it's much more simplified, and it genuinely is just easier to use. The economy itself, I mean, you, you pretty much get immediate feedback on your economic decisions as well as on your civil service decisions. People will let you know what's going on. I'm finding it the easiest to manipulate people's opinion as well as the politics around me and almost being able to virtually ignore the politics at times. It's not like Tropico 3, 4, or 5 where if you ignore factions, they will just eventually rise up and kill you. No. I actually just completely ignored the religious faction on several occasions. And the environmentalists. And didn't care. Yeah. In other words, the industrialists. Yeah, I just repeatedly ignored them. 
and almost never really had a reason to care. There was the occasional quest where they're threatening something big and then I'd have to do it, but otherwise I could stay in power with a 80 to 90 percent rating from the entire island with 80 to 90 percent of the votes and never have to bend a knee. The, the, they did provide some interesting things where you have to pick a side to go with for certain quests. That's interesting. But the fact that you can still manipulate the other side so well that you don't have any real consequence from it, a little, it just kind of no, falls flat. President, More importantly, all of the outside hey there, quests, the, the, the things from foreign countries and whatnot, are replaced by Penultimo. Without the interesting figures like uh, their version of Teddy Roosevelt or their version of uh, literal Hitler or their version of uh, communist Stalin talking to you constantly I mean most of the quests you get are from Penultimo or the random political leaders you don't have the outside people coming in doing their thing a lot so the re drastic reduction in what feels like the world itself around you is not welcome I wanted to interact with the Russian embassy more. I wanted to interact with the American embassy more, but it just felt like not only was there not a need to, there wasn't an opportunity to. And unlike Tropico 4 and 5, where specific missions had you operating for specific new characters, they don't exist here. So this significantly lessens the flavor and appeal of the game itself. And more importantly, there's a lot of same old, same old going around. And if it ain't broke, don't fix it. But what did you really add to this game? You added the ability to steal monuments, and you added and you added the ability to build bridges between islands. That's about it. The world is an odd place, isn't it? One day's friend is the next day's enemy. When I get to the core of the game, this is where the problems start to occur. The campaign itself. It's like Tropico 3. It's just play whatever island you want, unlock the next couple of islands, and there's no consequence. Tropico 5 had a campaign that stretched across multiple islands, and you had and it had a grand design element to it that you had to play on the same island and you had to live with your mess if you left it a mess. Tropico 5 had a sense of continuation. Tropico 5 had two very long campaigns with overarching stories, little mini stories for each mission, and genuinely challenge. Okay, I have to pause the review real quick just to point this out. This is how passive the military is. I didn't even realize I was under attack there. The attackers have been defeated. I didn't even know I had a rebellion going on. Like, I didn't even notice that that was happening. That's how passive you, the military actually becomes. I came to see you as soon as I found these were available, President. Because <coughs> you had to work with the island you had before in order to make the challenge work on the island you have now. I replayed the Tropico 5 campaigns over a dozen times. I have well in excess of, I don't know, 100, 200 hours? Something stupid in Tropico 5. I have 178 hours in Tropico 5, 63 hours in Tropico 4, and only 16 hours in Tropico 6. The fact that this was taken out that this overarching campaign, that this grand design that they built towards was just gone. It, it cheapened the experience. Tropico 6 took all that away and went back to an individual challenge on each island you have to complete and you leave. Nothing you do feels matter. Nothing you do feels like it matters. You still get a sense of accomplishment upon completing the island, but the feeling of designing for the future is gone. Also gone is the trial and error system of skills or your dynasty. All of it. Just 
all skills are just gone. For the first time ever in a Tropico game, your your politician has no skill, no specific advantage. You can get one, but it affects things so very little. The and there's no increasing it or making the effect nothing and it won't make up for bad decisions or imprecise decisions the replayability using different politicians different skills and the RPG systems of the trop of Tropico itself has been completely gutted it makes the character design feel pointless and I don't actually use them for anything but visiting structures and I don't really see a point in that when a lot of the time visiting structure costs more money than what it will actually help bring in especially once your island gets once your island gets above a thousand people visiting structures is literally useless because it just doesn't have enough of an effect yeah you can still visit those buildings but without managers dynasty members and the other RPG elements from Tropico 5 or even the RPG elements from Tropico 4 it's gone. It's like having a Fallout 4 character at higher levels. It doesn't matter your build. You can do everything. In this case, your build is aesthetic only. It's purely about your skill, your skills as a person managing an island, and the islands do not get easier based upon decisions you made earlier. It's literally just start over. With this missing, your mistakes are also amplified. I went from a wonderfully thriving island in the world worlds to losing the game within two years of the Cold War. Why? Because suddenly all the products I was making in the world war wars were not worth anything. And I apparently have two years to change the entire island or lose the game. I had to play the scenario, the scenario three times before I realized as soon as I changed errors, the price of all my goods dropped by more than 50%. The economy does work. I mean, once you get it into your head that the stuff you make in the colonial area and the world wars is not going to work for the Cold War, and the stuff you make during the Cold War is not going to work for the modern era, um, once you get that in your head that you're going to have to just revolutionize your island every time, it, it works. Um, the trade ship system in Tropico 6 is much better. Like, so much better. It's what Tropico 5's trade ship system should have been. But I get the idea of adapt and evolve, but this feels too harsh for such a lighthearted game. Even on the easier difficulties, this is still just a jarring. Once I'd gotten through all of this, once I'd had a modern era island and I had a 10k population, I was done. What in the past should have been a 30 to 40 hour experience should have been something I should have been playing at least an hour for every dollar I spent on the game it was six and a half hours. Thought maybe I was burned out on Tropico, so I went and played five for a while. No, actually, I'm not burned out on Tropico. I played five and wanted to start a new campaign after my sandbox game and ended up blowing almost half a fucking day just goofing off in Tropico. And then going, oh right, I'm supposed to review Tropico 6. The fact I didn't leave Tropico 6 feeling excited or wanting the next part of the game, and I could still go back to Tropico 5 or even 4 and get that, I'm left not wanting to come back. Nothing rethinking my strategy or how I was going to approach the game. More important because I got zero long-term reward, and there was, there was just no no reason I have no reason to come back and try something different from a new angle or try a new way to master the game once I've mastered it one way there's no substance to wanting to do it again it feels so wrong for a Tropico game to end and I want and I learn nothing you know more than how success. to play the game I did now more. with having I'm played four with man. every different skill on the island to max them out or Tropico 5 to get the perfect dynasty and then see that dynasty how it affects an island and just feel super rewarded and then get to 6 and none of that's there Tropico 6 lacks this and this lacks the sense of satisfaction or looking for the horizon for what's next there's clearly national wonders that are better than the others even a meta to them if you will that make it where you're going to want to choose 
this wonder over this one every time. I'm going to interrupt myself again. I've been incredibly passive with my gameplay this entire time. You guys have seen me basically build one building and make like five decisions on the same building type. My current overall happiness is 68%. My current approval rating is still 98%. I have 19 homeless and 17 unemployed. And 27 unemployed. And 27 unemployed, there are open jobs, so it's not like they... For most of them, actually. I just have no reason to do anything. There's no challenge to this. There's no point for me to actually make or operate on. There's nothing that I need to actually do. The island is operating on its own. Now, there are still... This issue still keeps popping up, and I can't do anything about it. But this is the fact of the matter. By this... Uh, a lot of the game, this is what you're doing. You're just observing. Unlike previous Tropicas where that wasn't the case. So... Yeah, I don't know what you did or what you changed, Calypso, but this is now boring. Running an island as a dictator with absolute power is boring. New quest elements and the way your Swiss bank account works has made me very happy. But I found it increasingly difficult and incredibly difficult to just get $500 into my Swiss bank account. You find yourself desperate trying to accumulate enough to get a bonus from the Swiss broker to actually keep your island afloat. There are some strategies that are far overpowered and completely unbalanced, such as the bank strategy. And then there are some things that just, why am I having to put so much effort into this and the rest of the island is so passive? We wanted the military to be redesigned. We've been begging for that for years. And the military is still completely and utterly a passive observer military. You just hope it's big enough to deal with the problem when it occurs. It's nice that they invade from multiple directions now. And you do have to stop invasions from multiple places. Um, but total lack of actual tactical control or even the suggested turn-based system for your military where the island itself kind of pauses during the battle and you know plays out hour by hour so you just move your troops around and you have an actual tactical battle no no that's that didn't happen you, your military is still pretty much doing this and this is what you do for your mouse and keyboard you just hold up your hands for doing and that, you just babe. wait for your military to be done Having multiple islands and organizing them makes it intricate for different designs and the much larger populations are very welcome changes. The fact is though, everything feels so passive and the political obligations are so easy. It's the economic ones that make you worry and it's hard to manage. The, the, the also total lack of change doesn't make this game worth it. It actually makes it not worth it. I had hopes for this game because of how much had improved between Tropico 4 and 5 and how much I played Tropico 5. Now 6 just feels like a massive step backwards. So much has been removed for the game, it feels hollow. The graphics may be up to date, but the massive effort to make the game appeal to more people has removed its heart and soul. It's still using the same engine it was using when Tropico 3 came out. And this is an addition of Tropico, I would say, skip. First time I've ever... I don't know how long it's been. When did Tropico one come out like this should tell you how much I feel like crap saying this when did Tropico 1 come out I'm having to look this up right now <sighs> Thankfully, there are some new games that have come out that are not disappointments that we'll be going over over the course of the next week. And I have the Hoof to Cuffs book to review, and it's actually good. But this one, I, I want my money back. 
So if you found this review helpful, please do hit the like button. If you enjoyed my commentary on Tropico 6 and why it's actually not very good, uh, do hit the thumbs up. If you don't, if you disagree with me, there's the comments. Let's have a discussion. Yell at me. It's fine. I showed you everything. Um, and if you want to see the previous review, review or video, here it is. And also, I will see you guys Wednesday night, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, Fallout Equestria. It's literally like the biggest stream I do every week. Um, and it's totally worth coming to. Uh, you can ask anyone in my Discord server, anyone in the comments, anyone who goes and watches those streams. Yes, you want to be there. And then Saturday night, drunk stream. Drunk writing stream. I sit here and I try to write while you guys get to talk to me and interrogate me and make fun of me. So I'll see you guys then. In the meantime, good night, everybody. Oh, and I'm live this afternoon. Like, if you're watching this video, go check out the Twitch because I'm probably getting set up or soon TM.